They tried to bury us, but they didn't understand. We were the seeds. A global pandemic provided a front row seat, opening eyes and expanding minds to an overdue awakening. Wake up, America, wake up, for we cannot stop, and we will not and cannot be patient. Don't shoot. A disruption, not a moment, not even a movement. It's not a movement. When you black, it's not a movement. It's, it's a lifestyle. You have a problem with saying Black Lives Matter, you need to check your privilege. Trapped in a justice system, not built for equality. But the seeds once planted started to break through the soil. A crop of resilient, unapologetic voices emerged. Think about having a life squeezed out of you. You can't see no more. You can't hear, you can't breathe, nothing. After nine minutes, it's over. Standing up for what we know is right, recognizing the giants who paved the way for us. When self-interest and bitterness seem to prevail, that we share a common destiny. By honoring all those whose shoulders we stand on, we are making history for our own generation. By demanding change and leveling the playing field. Because what starts here will change the world. That moving quote from the great Earl Campbell, that powerful call to action narrated by the junior captain of this Texas football team, Caden Stearns, who in a matter of minutes will lead his team onto the newly renamed Campbell Williams Field to begin the 2020 football season. Stearns also the vocal leader for Texas football and its fight against racial inequality, a fight that can no longer be separated from the game of football itself. That combined with the global pandemic that is COVID-19 presents us with a season unlike any other we've witnessed before. I'm Lowell Galindo here with the former Heisman Trophy winner, Andre Ware. We're about to get into the unknown. Yeah. How did the players players handle that? Well, I think you ha they've handled it well because you, you're facing the unknown on a daily basis if you're a player as well as a coach. We talked to Tom Herman this week. He said, hey, as of Wednesday, 2.30, we did, we, we're still playing, so let's get out here and have a good practice. And then on the other side of it, in terms of social justice, all these players, I think, across the country realize – they now have a platform and they are going to be heard. Each and every one has a cause in which they want to fight for, especially here at the University of Texas. They have found their voice and already using that voice to get change. And recently we had an opportunity to talk to the Texas football captains about what social justice means to them. It allowed us to understand the concept that we're not just athletes, we are black men. We spend so much time with each other and we talk a lot about how we are family and we are brothers. So it was great for us to come together as a family and do something out of football, which was participation in marches and speak out and put out statements and try to get things changed. I think that the team has done a great job fighting for social justice. I think it's very powerful when a group of guys like we have come together and want to make positive change. We had a bunch of conversations as a whole. People were able to understand perspective and see where we were coming from, see what we've had to deal with growing up and what we're still dealing with in this present day. Me personally, I think it made us stronger. We started being real with one another, having these conversations that typically most people will stay out of because it's uncomfortable. So I think us being real with one another and where we came from, backgrounds, and what we believe really opened each other's minds to other people's views and stuff like that to accept them and to move forward. The Big 12 allowing teams to wear messages on uniforms this season. The Texas Leadership Council deciding on a unified message of, we are one. In the words of Caden Stearns, we have an issue with social justice and we need change. Getting closer to the kick of the 2020 season opener on Longhorn Network. Presented by Toyota as the Longhorns walk in the Longhorn, Bevo 15. He's anticipating the kick as Texas hosts UTEP at a Conference USA. Welcome back inside DKR. I'm Lowell Galindo here with Andre Ware. And as you know, Texas is at its best when they have an elite quarterback. Sam Ellinger has established himself as one of those guys, but is he good enough to make a run at the Heisman Trophy this season? Well, I think Because so. you won one, so I, you should know. I think he is. I think when you play at the University of Texas and your team has some success, certainly you're going to put yourself in that conversation. And he has played 
his way right into Heisman type conversations. He wanted to be a Texas Longhorn since he was just a pup. An excellent thrower of the football, but he shows you the toughness and the grit to get the tough yards when needed. He just kind of sort of wills his team to victory in, in certain instances. He's fun to watch. I can't wait to see him live tonight. You see all the numbers. He is the career active leader. Total yards, pass yards, passing touchdowns, and touchdowns responsible for. But Andre, as you also know, Heisman voters, they typically like the best player on the best team in America. And for Sam to have that shot, the defense is gonna have to pick it up. It was one of the worst in program history a year ago, especially when it comes to pass defense. So Tom Herman brings in Chris Ash, a guy he knows very well. Five previous years as a defensive coordinator, and only once did his defense finish outside the top 20 in total defense. Yeah, it's Who will benefit from that? Yeah, it's something they worked on. Joseph Osai, he is going to benefit from that because they're moving him down from linebacker to, to basically a defensive end look. So he's going to have plenty of opportunities to really get after the quarterback, a guy that can make plays, speed, agility. He's got everything you want to play on the outside at the edge. And then on the back end of it, Caden Stearns is just a playmaker on the back end of Texas's defense. Chasing down, he's a blitzer, can play in the box. He can cover deep. And when, you get, when he has a chance to unload on a defender, he can certainly do that as well. Excellent, and I mean excellent ball skills. Still looking for another one of those interceptions after bringing down four as a true freshman. The numbers for Osai, we heard from Ash. They're expecting him to have a monster season getting to the quarterback. Everything is going to look different. For more on that, let's throw it down to Chris Button. Well, Lowell, there were a lot of protocols just to be out on the field here today. Both teams had to have three tests. UTEP took a rapid test before they got on their plane. They chartered over here. Once they were on that plane, they considered themselves inside of a bubble. So when they got to the hotel, they were not allowed to be around family or friends. I can report zero players from either team are out for COVID-related protocols. Now, talking with Sam Ellinger yesterday, he told me he was having trouble getting excited because UTEP wasn't in town yet. He just wanted to know that they would be here, they would have enough players just to be able to play a game. That's the kind of anxiety and feeling that it takes every single week to be able to play a game. So when the coaches and players tell you one game at a time, that's truly the motto for 2020 college football season. It's got to start somewhere, and it starts now for Sam Ellinger and the Texas Longhorns. Texas, 44-point favorites, second largest favorite role since 1978. The kick is coming up. It's UTEP and Texas on Longhorn Network. Ball presented by Toyota. Longhorns get set for the minors of UTEP at a conference USA. Now let's send it to the field for the coin toss presented by the Texas Lottery. UTEP won the toss, deferred, so the Longhorns will receive. To see this revamped receiving core right away. And the star of the evening, Sam Ellinger, will be on display after the kickoff. Well, you know who likes this, the new offensive coordinator. Yes, indeed. Mike Yursich, he told us a day ago, wanted to play violent, wanted to start fast. He will get his shot, put the ball in the hands of that man, Sam Ellinger. Yeah, we talked to him. He said that, you know, even through the adjusted workouts and just getting to town and working with these guys, he feels that this unit, his unit, communicates extremely well. And, Lowell, that's half the battle. And here we go. Deshaun Jamison will take it out from five yards deep. He's got some room tripped up just north of the 20-yard line. 
the electric Deshaun Jameson. And now it's time to turn it over to that man. This could be his final season at the University of Texas. Again, all players playing in this fall season will have an extra year of eligibility. Born and raised here in town, 93 touchdowns, responsible for second most, only behind Colt McCoy, and raising over $200,000 for food security during COVID-19. He's got a new offensive coordinator. He's got a new center, and he's looking for go-to receivers. Play action, and there it is. Josh Moore, foot race, one of the fastest on the team, and you will not catch Joshua Moore. What a way to start the season. First play, new offensive coordinator. And you go to Josh Moore, the deep threat on this team. Safety takes a bad angle. Justin Price, Prince, I'm sorry. And Joshua Moore makes everybody pay. Another electric playmaker wearing number six from Devin Duvernay down to Joshua Moore. Cameron Dicker for the extra point. And it is 70, nothing. 78 yards on the first play to start the season. Going back to the thoughts of Mike Yursich, wanted to start fast, he's a happy man. Yeah, he is. I mean, they talked about it. That was one of the keys to the game for Texas, is to actually start fast. Well, they are certainly on that on the right page tonight. It's just a simple slant route. Ellinger has to wait for Moore to get into the second window. And I mean, the ball was right on the money, kept hitting him right in stride. One as a quarterback, boy, you love it. You're just going to get a simple slant in here. The safety's going to take a bad angle. I mean, a very bad angle by Prince. And then it is goodbye, good night. Nobody on the field going to catch Joshua Moore. Moore sat out last season. And he is back with a vengeance. Talk about getting your footing for the season. What a way to get it if you're Sam Ellinger. Longest reception since 2016. And keep in mind, this was one of the worst first quarter offenses in all of college football a year ago. UTEP now with their shot. Justin Garrett taken down shy of the 20-yard line. So it worked out well. For the new offensive coordinator, Andre, it's time to see what the new DC has. He's going to try to game plan and shut down this man, Gavin Hardison, sophomore quarterback from Hobbs, New Mexico, right on the Texas border, just northwest of Midland, Odessa. He had a solid week last week throwing the football, completed 60% of his passes, 212 yards, a touchdown, and an interception, but nothing really seems to phase him. You know, he throws mistakes over his shoulder, keeps on playing, doesn't get phased by big plays. We had a chance to talk to him this week. Just a very even keel type player. The four-man front showed immediately by this Texas defense. We had a delay a game, I think. We were early, the clock's on at zero. Delay yep. a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. So we got to look, Lowell, at the fast-paced offense of Texas right away. Now the new new look defense, the 4-2-5 look that uh, Chris Ash is bringing in and implementing. The throw is short, looking for Jacob Cowing, and that skips. It's going to be a lot more responsibility on the cornerbacks this year, Andre. Yeah, they're bringing pressure already. And Court Jaquis, the linebacker, he's bringing heat and it forces the ball out of Hardison's hands kind of a little bit earlier than he wanted. Tended for cowing the safety, the, excuse me, the receiver on the outside, but the blitz got there so fast he, could, he couldn't step into the throw. Top of the line is Joseph Osai coming off a monster performance in the Alamo Bowl. Over the middle, and that is a nice pickup by Walter John.
Don Jr., one of the toughest players for this UTEP offense. You and I talked before kick and told you that and agree, we have both agreed, UTEP, well, they're kind of unfazed. They had a game last week. We beat Stephen F. Austin 24-14, so the first game jitters kind of out of the way, and it's a group that wants to kind of control the game with a balanced attack and be there in the end to try to put it away. Third and one. Fields with the carry. And he will be stuffed short right at the line of scrimmage. And the Texas defense holds on third down. A lot of bodies around the line of scrimmage for the Longhorns. And kind of surprised that UTEP chose to, to run the football. Showing the youth of Gavin Hardison, the, the quarterback. And you count bodies in the box. That's a, an opportunity, even on third and short, to spin one outside. Dangerous Deshaun Jamison is back. He has been a spark plug in special teams for this Texas team. You go back to the Alamo Bowl. And the team was struggling. He was the spark with a nice punt return. Get that team going. Calling for the fair catch. About the 33. So far, so good. 78-yard touchdown and a three and out. Texas with the early 7 nothing edge. Well, since I'm a, I used to play the position, I have a, an appreciation for dimes. Let's take another look at that dime that Ellinger hits Joshua Moore with. I mean, an easy, nice throw right in stride to where the receiver doesn't have to hesitate, wait on the football right out in front. Boy, that's a heck of a way to start a football game. You're always looking for a way to get your footing in a game. When you hit one like that, boy, you are well on your way. Especially first game without Duvernay and Colin Johnson. That's how you want to start it. Roshan Johnson once again in at running back. Over the middle, off the fingertips of Brennan Eagles, and that was close to being picked off by Deron Lowe. They're pretty much the same play, just to the other side. You show it inside to hold the linebackers. You see the linebackers come up. It creates a big hole behind where the linebackers disappear from, and that one should have been caught as well. Carry to Roshan Johnson. Showing the physicality, lowering the shoulder. He's had an entire offseason to mentally prepare for playing the running back spot. We're seeing some of that tempo on third and one. Back to Johnson. He's got daylight. One man to beat. Justin Prince will bring him down, but not after Roshan. Scrambles for major yardage, and there's going to be 15 after that as well. Yeah, I think he got a handful of face masks, but... They go into warp speed, talking to Mike Yurchich, the offensive coordinator. When they go fast, they call it warp speed. That's their tempo. And right to the line of scrimmage, they snap it quickly. Got a set of plays that they get to. And caught UTEP. Maybe sleeping a little bit, slow to line up. How about Roshan Johnson getting the start at tailback? Keep in mind, he was a young man that was moved to that position the week of the starting game a year two ago. Two fouls on the play, one from each team, holding 68 of the offense. Face mask, 28 of the defense. Those two fouls offset, replay third down. Yeah, they're gonna bring it back and do it all over again. That'd and go right back there again. That would go right back to Roshan Johnson. Correction. It's the, the center. Correction, the face mask was on 21, 21. So Derek Kerstetter, the center, yeah. is called for the hold. And you get Prince on the back end with an obvious face mask there with the tackle. And that they, negates the 35-yard gain by Johnson. They talked about Johnson to us and described him with his unlimited potential. Excellent runner after contact. He kind of looks for it. 
so we'll do it again on third and one. Johnson staying in the game. At the bottom of your screen, you have the grad transfer from Michigan, Tariq Black, with Moore and Jordan Whittington joining him. Quick pass to Whittington. Makes a cut, stumbles, and it's going to be close. It looks like first down yardage by Whittington. Try to make it look like the exact same play, and that's a little bit of window dressing by the offensive coordinator here, making plays look the same and then spinning the football in a different direction. Jake Smith not available in this game. Whittington will get a lot of action in the slot. There's Cade Brewer knocking over Black on his way for about six yards. You know, one of the more versatile players in this Texas offense, Cade Brewer does just about everything with solid, solid hands. Johnson ducking his way through traffic. And that will set up another third and short. When you have a weapon like Sam Ellinger, you can do just about anything when you get to a manageable situation like third and short. Third and three, third and two. He certainly can carry the football for you. Then you put pressure on the edges and you leave him an option in which to flick the football out in the pass game. Ingram checks in for the first time. That's Hellback. Ellinger with time. He'll take it himself. First down yardage and wisely slides around the 40. Everything cleared out. Deep zone drops by this UTEP defense. And it's just a big area in which Ellinger could just tuck it and pick up the first down. And a whistle blown is going to be a false start. False start on the offense. All 11 players were not set at the snap. It's a five yard <laughs> penalty, still first down. Everybody. Well, this is when you get kind of in off schedule a little bit here. As, as a, a penalty takes you, takes you behind the down and distance mark. Ingram up the middle. He's still going. Wow. Lost him in the crowd and showing some punch on his way through the UTEP defense. You think he's not motivated? You think he's motivated because of the uh, the start by Rashawn Johnson? He gets his opportunity to come in the game. They said that they were going to play all three running backs and they were going to build depth through competition. And so that's not only in practice, but how well are you playing on Saturday afternoon? Much different situation at tellback than it was at this time a year ago. Miners back it off, then again, show him blitz. Ellinger over the middle. He's got Kate Brewer. And Brewer is down at the 20. Second catch on this drive for the tight end. Well, it was an excellent pickup by Ingram, the running back on a blitzer that allowed for time. <laughs> Miscommunication here as Eagles cut it short. And Ellinger was going for the end zone. Boy, I love when running backs protect the quarterback. And Ingram picks up, picks up the blitzer and allows for time to get to Brewer, the tight end. Watch the blitz pick up by 26 right there. That allows Sam Ellinger just enough time to pick up his big tight end, Cade Brewer, and move the football down the field. Excellent work. Whittington in motion. Looks that way. And a wide open receiver. He had two of them. And it's Brewer, his third catch. Caps the drive with the Texas touchdown. Well, he had Joshua Moore. I mean, a wide open. He'll see it in the film study tomorrow. And then he comes back. And hits Cade Brewer. But Moore was open first. That's when you just have just everybody. It's, it's dealer's choice. Ellinger five for seven on that Texas touchdown drive. Two drives, two touchdowns. 
the 2020 season. Off to a good start. Well, you got a bunch of them running wide open. You choose the big 6-4 tight end at Cade Brewer. On Longhorn Network is presented by Toyota. Toyota is a proud corporate sponsor of Texas Athletics. Toyota, let's go places. And in part by Coors Light, official sponsor of the Texas Longhorns. That's the late Julius Whittier, first black letterman in the history of Texas football. Statue will go up in his honor at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. Part of the student athletes here at the University of Texas using their voice for change. Dicker kicks it away, and this will not be returned. Let's go back and take a look at that touchdown pass, the last touchdown pass by Ellinger. I mean, this is dealer's choice. When you have one here and one here running absolutely wide open, Dennis Barnes, he busts, his co busts the coverage. And I tell you what, he just picked one out. J Josh, Josh Moore is going to tell him I'm open. Brewer is going to come back and thank him for, for coming to him. But, boy, it doesn't get any better than that when you draw him up. What a good, great start for the Texas Longhorns tonight. Second offensive possession for the Miners. A quick give and nothing is there. Joshua Fields nowhere to roam. The front four of the Texas defense, stout. What do you think that does, Andre, with Texas going to the four-man front? I think it uh, it allows you certainly to play the run better, but then you, you get a dynamic pass rusher who can put his hand in the ground, in the dirt or stand him up, creates a, a few different looks. And then when you bring, you, they play it with only two linebackers and a spur, a kind of a hybrid defensive back that can be active all over the field. Over the middle and good hands there by Justin Garrett as Hardison found him for the first down. Let's take a check out our keys for tonight's ball game for both both Texas and UTEP. UTEP wanting to be balanced tonight. Try to keep this Texas defense off balance. Throwing the football with success that they had there. Texas wanting to play fast and physical and then making the proper adjustments defensively to what UTEP is doing on offense. UTEP staff high on the arm of Hardison. They say he can make all the throws. But just a second career start going sideline to Devon Cooper and that was blanket coverage there by Josh Thompson. He switched positions in the offseason to now play his first position, cornerback. Yeah, I'm going to blame a little bit of that on Cooper, the receiver, for fading out of bounds and allowing Thompson to take him there. You have got to fight to give me about four yards from the sideline so I fade you away from coverage with the football. Quick bubble screen, incomplete. In and out of the hands of Jacob Cowing. They've tried to find Cowing twice now, unsuccessfully. And that one had a little bit too much mustard on him. Hardison's gonna want it back because all you gotta do, he had him, he had him open. All you just, you're just trying to put the ball in his hands on a little bubble screen where he's moving up the field. They had blocks set up, it's gonna at least get him to third and manageable, but now in third and long, we're going to see some, some pressure here. Deion Hankins, the freshman, checks in at running back. And off script there, off page, Walter Don was just not ready for that pass. And that's going to lead to a UTEP punt. It's the timing certainly off between Don and Hardison, the quarterback. And that's a head coach, Dana Dimmel, showing signs of frustration. Former longtime offensive coordinator. Bill Snyder at Kansas State. This is season number three for him. The Miners coming off an opening win against Stephen F. Austin, a game in which they trailed early 14 to three. 
as though as well, Lowell, that Artisan may have thought he was getting, a little, getting pressured a little faster than, than he thought. He had more time to sit in the pocket. What pressure on that punt. Short of the 30. And that's where it will end. Let's check in with Chris. Well, it's not quite the amount of fans that you're used to seeing on a game day here, but some fans allowed up to 25% here at DKR. They expected around 18,000 fans here. You can see socially distanced. That doesn't also include the cardboard cutouts. Students were also allowed to come, about 3,000 of them. In order for those students to come, though, they had to come get a COVID test free yesterday. Test negative for them to be allowed here in the stadium. And I will say it does make a huge difference from games that are no fans to even just a little bit. It still feels like yes. a game atmosphere, just not quite the intensity that we're used to on a Saturday here in Austin. Totally agree with you, Chris, in that regard. And the cutouts had me fooled when we first got here. <laughs> I, I must admit, they had me fooled. You were generally concerned that there were about a 1,000 people yeah. that were baking in the sun for yes. two hours before the game. And here he is, Bajan Robinson checking into the game. True freshman from Arizona. This is the most hype out-of-state running back recruit at the University of Texas since Ricky Williams. Yeah, they talk about his physicality that he runs with. Looks the part, change of direction as well. He's just young. You know, when he's in the game, they're not going to put him in a lot of situations where he has to protect Sam Ellinger. But he is electric. Open receiver, Tariq Black, making his first catch as a member of this Texas football team. I like that number. Zero. Zero on the on a wide receiver. That's one of those numbers you gotta play if you're gonna wear something like that. If you wear one or you wear zero, you better be a baller. You better be a dude. He's looked like a dude in the past, just he's never really stayed healthy. That's another carry for Robinson, working on the right side. Kelton Moss, the JUCO transfer, brings him down. Freshman from Tucson. Number 21 overall prospects in this year's recruiting class and two-time Arizona High School Player of the Year. So they got the Arizona High School Player of the Year and the Gatorade National Player of the Year, who also is from Arizona but not playing in this game, Jake Smith, because of a hammy issue. He needs his experience, just playing time. Ellinger, right side, Black breaks a tackle. A stiff arm and a stumble eventually brought down by Justin Prince. I think he's this receiving group with Black and Moore, along with Kate Brewer, the tight end, proving that you know, they're more than capable of stepping in for Duvernay and Johnson. Now going to Moore. And Moore takes it inside the red zone. He's waiting on opportunities to step in and play. And they're kind of in the shadows of those two, the two receivers I just talked about, Johnson and Duvernay. But now an opportunity to step forward. Robinson. Stout stand there from the UTEP defense. You know, this is where, if you're Mike Cox, the defensive coordinator for UTEP, you're trying to play bend but don't break. Don't allow Texas into the end zone and find yourself down 21-0. You're, you're hoping to just hold to a field goal here, or a field goal attempt. And that stop slows him down a little bit. UTEP defensively was looking gassed. As the Miners make his substitution, Davion Inyang running on the field late. Second and 10. More in motion. Inside screen to Johnson, flag on the play. You had a guy check in. And then all of a sudden, the big fella, Kelton Moss, was trying to check out, and I counted 11. They were short a player initially. There were multiple fouls on the play, one by each team, holding offense number 75, illegal substitution, 12 players on the defense. Those two fouls offset will replay second down. Second time tonight. Offsetting fouls. There is 12 as he's trying to get off. Five in the back. And 
Seven on the front, front seven. Mulligan on the play, do it over. Razzle Dazzle, Whittington, Ellinger, the lead blocker, and he's plowing his way. Whittington trying to muscle into the end zone, and it'll be taken down just short. He's just a football player, just loves the game. And look, Texas wants to go warp speed right here. Waiting for Sam Cosme to get back at left tackle. Roshan Johnson, in zone. Well, Sam Ellinger, you just kind of want to know what he's all about. That previous play when he's out in front of Whittington throwing block, throwing a block, and not just throwing a block or getting in a guy's way, but actually moving him backwards. So Whittington would have an opportunity to get to the end zone and there. Obviously, Rashawn Johnson taking care of business, getting in, into uh, into the end zone for the score. How about this, though? Ellinger has taken more hits since the start of 2017 than any player. Well, he dished out one there. Yeah, are you okay with that? That's your quarterback. That's your <laughs> franchise right there. I think that's what that's the way Tom Herman plays, though. That's If you're going to play quarterback for him, you're going to play physical. He compared him to J.T. Barrett when I uh, asked him about that yesterday, who was a physical player that was an, a, a really good passer as well. And historically, his quarterbacks take more contact than anybody. Yes. But they keep going. The captain paving the way as Whittington gets Texas to the edge of the end zone. Love it. One, the unified message worn on the jerseys of this Texas football team. Caden Stearns is one of the guys that has helped bring this team together to find their collective voice, standing up for what is right, and also taking care of business here inside DKR. It's 21-0 UTEP. So Texas offense is pouring it on early. I just wish everybody could have the experience of being in a locker room the diversity that that is there and you're all striving for one common thing and for the University of Texas obviously is to win the Big 12 and then maybe move on in, into the postseason easily for UTEP is the same thing to become conference champions but you can't do it when the locker room is divided Artisan flanked by Dion Hankins, and it is a carry to Hankins. They call him Hank the Tank, all-time leading rusher in El Paso history. Had a breakout game against Stephen F. Austin a week ago, going over 100 yards. Quadres Wadley was penciled in to be the starting tailback, but before last season, hurt his toe, and he's really never been the same player. Did not make the trip to Austin for the Miners. I think Hank the Tank put on about 15 pounds of muscle this during quarantine. It's starting to show. They, they really relied on him last week to the tune of 113 yards. Utah looking to take a shot. Downfield at the 40, and it falls incomplete as that is Cooper again. And guess who in the coverage? Josh Thompson. Thompson so much upside. We asked Sam Ellinger, who excites you on the defense? And that's the first player that Ellinger brought up. I'll tell you what, he has been excellent in coverage. Stride for stride there with Cooper. Not giving an inch. You can tell he's... Starting to play with some confidence. Played in the first four games last season and broke his foot. He's out for the year. He's back and looking good. Third and ten. Artisan flushed. 
Looking sideline, and that is broken up. Caden Stearns with the PBU. When I mean, they talk, Chris Ash talked to us about allowing these guys to play freely and play man to man. So they're going to get after you in this new Texas 4 2 5 look, but there's no one open. I mean, not a soul open. You see receivers, defensive backs running right in the pocket with the UTEP receivers. That's excellent defense. Jamison once again back. The punt is short. It's going to be brought down close to the 50. So fantastic field position to start for this Texas offense. Well, this is when I would go up top. When you get the football around the 50-yard line, you're licking your chops. That's, that's, a, that's a gimme possession pretty much. That if I'm Sam Ellinger, I am begging for a shot call right now. We brought up the stat that while Yursich was at Oklahoma State, there were very few teams that took more downfield shots then Oklahoma State asked him, would this be part of the offense? He said, oh yeah, we're gonna take those shots. This is the perfect field position in which to do it. Elliger, eight of 10 for 169, two touchdowns. Ingram, his running back. Jared Wiley and Brewer, the tight ends. will keep it with Ingram. He's brought down by Tyrese Knight. Yeah, packed in there is UTEP defensively. He wanted to come into this game and tackle a little bit better. Got off to a slow start against Stephen F. Austin, but just hung in the game. And pulled away late. Knight, a Juco transfer. Staff likes the upside for him at linebacker for the minors. Play action. Here is that shot. Good adjustment and hold in by Marcus Washington, the sophomore from St. Louis. Had to know it was coming based on the field position that Texas starts the drive with. A nice job by Ellinger sitting in the pocket and waiting for the receiver to clear. Marcus Washington, nice catch. Fourth catch of his career, the longest of his career. Another shot in zone. Will he stay in bounds? No. Black did not make the catch. That was left a little long. Well, I like the, his frame. 6'3", 270, finally healthy. Done a nice job of coming in and learning the offense and putting himself in a position to really play a lot more this season. He was a top 100 prospect out of high school in Connecticut. 507 yards in his Michigan career. Flint to Robinson. Lost his feeding, his footing, excuse me. It's been a slow go early on for Bajan, but that's something that, that Yursich pointed out. You can't rush it with these young running backs. And James with a tackle, and I'll tell you what, if he doesn't make it on the slithery Bajan Johnson Robinson, he may have been in the end zone. That is a tough, tough assignment when you're one-on-one -on -one with a back like Robinson. Miners trying to get their first stop of the game. Ellinger, right side, great hands, but it's in and out, looking for more. I'm guaranteeing you, if, if that, if more comes down with that one, Tom Herman might entertain the thought of going for it on fourth down. Are you kidding me? Because it's, <laughs> it's you know, right around the 20-yard line where he's going to catch it, and they feel pretty confident. But And they, uber aggressive in those yeah, situations. No, no doubt about it, but they're bringing in one of the better kickers in the entire nation right here. 43-yard attempt. The man they call Dicker the kicker. First attempt of the season. And wide right. So what can UTEP now do with a little bit of momentum? I think they got to get some footing for Hardison, the quarterback. A couple of quick completions to soften, to move Texas out wider. A couple of quick throws. Give me a slant. Give me a, a hitch route. Something that, that's an easy completion, a catch and a run, where you set yourself up on second down and media. And then once you get the UT defense to spread out, that's when you can run 
Hank and, or Hank the Tank inside. <laughs> But not until then. They're just going to pack the box and dare you to, to complete them on the outside. Just 28 total yards against this new book, Texas defense. The front four has been outstanding. To Hankins. Left side slips through one tackle, and Court Jacobus brings him down at the 30. Not a bad run and an excellent cut. Once he saw the hole, got north and south in a hurry, two hands on the football when the posse arrived. Jaquist was buried on the depth chart for most of last season. The most publicity he got was the way he was awarded a scholarship before yeah. the start of the year. And now it's back-to-back -back starts at linebacker for Jaquist as he started the bowl game in San Antonio. Jay was a defensive end at Texas. Hankins, a few yards up the gut. They're trying to slow things down. Remember I told you they yeah. wanted to, to be balanced, control the clock. And when you get start to get deeper into a football game, you have to move away from those those types of or the, basically the game plan. But slowing down does nothing unless you convert and in situations and, like this. And move the chain and find points on the tail end of drive. You're exactly right. Third and three. Tight end and a full back end for the Miners. A very K-State-like look. Hankins will try to bounce it. Nowhere to go. As Josh Thompson is having a standout first half. Trying to allow this athletic offensive line for, of UTEP to, to get the job done. And bringing a lot of people to the party. Josh Thompson, who is having... On a heck of a first quarter here for the Longhorns and on that tackle. How was the tackling looked overall, Andre? I think it's been excellent. That was one of the, the main concerns last year. It was a huge problem for this Texas defense. Josh Long punts it away. Jamison will give it a chance. Trying to break out of traffic and he loses yards. That is the end of one. It started with the 78-yard touchdown strike from Ellinger to Moore. 21-0 Longhorns at the end of the first quarter. You're going to play quarterback for Tom Herman. You better be one tough man. Ellinger on that previous drive took a couple of big time shots. Didn't let it phase him. Just got right up and went right back to business, Lowell. He is one tough dude. Just kind of embraces the contact oh, yeah. during a football game and eats 45 pound weights in the offseason like it's nothing. It's interesting that Dana Dimmel is a head coach on the opposite side because he was the offensive coordinator and recalled. Really the game in Sam's freshman year where he became the dude. Yeah. It was the overtime win against Kansas State when he delivered that forearm. And that was really the moment he showed that he had the toughness to lead this Texas team. Helps when you're a big dude as well. And Sam Hellinger is certainly that. First player of the second quarter. Quick pass. And this is another transfer. Brendan Schooler. At his first practice on Sunday, and they throw him right in. I'll tell you what, nice, just a simple hitch route. Look at, look inside to draw coverage, not give it away that you're going to flip the ball to the outside. And the tackling for UTEP has been way less than stellar in the first half. Schooler started his career at Oregon, then transferred to Arizona when the Pac-12 decided not to play. Made another transfer to the University of Texas. Miscommunication as Ellinger went deep and Moore cut that route off short. Well, that's just maturity right there. It's not going to force it into coverage. Not going to hold the football and take an unnecessary hit. Just throw it away and come back on second down. That was a straight up throw away? That's a straight up throw away. He saw him break inside and knew the, the route was, he was, you know, they basically they weren't on the same page. Throw it away, let's get the second down.
shoulder. And Moore is going to be right on the first down marker, moving the chains. Boy, tough for a defense to, to defend crossers from one side of the formation all the way to the other. And you got a linebacker in Forrester trying to run with a speedy receiver. And there is Schooler. One man to beat, and he will. Second catch is a Longhorn. His first touchdown. Not bad for a guy that's been practicing for about a week. Well, we talked to Jay Money, Josh Caldwell, this week, and it's the poor tackling showing itself once again for this UTEP defense. Just one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. You got to make that tackle. A bad angle. You don't get your hands on the receiver. And he's obviously going to make him play. Make him pay. So the new faces are the faces we haven't seen in a while making an impact at the receiver spot. From the grad transfers, Black and Schooler, to Moore, who did not play last season. All helping the Longhorns offense churn out the points. Schooler taking his man to school. 28-0, Longhorn. We wondered who was going to take the place of Johnson and Duvernay. Obviously, Joshua Moore got into full stride early, the very first play of the game. Then it was Cade Brewer finding the end zone. Tariq Black makes his presence felt. And then Washington, Jordan, excuse me, Washington steps up and makes a nice catch. And Schooler just got to town already in the end zone as a long haul. How long do you think it takes to truly be comfortable with new receivers? Well, it takes a while. And when you're going through what these kids have gone through this offseason with COVID and not knowing if a season's going to be played or not, the chemistry that you, it, it takes to develop, I mean, the time to develop that chemistry, it takes a while. I talked to uh, Ellinger about that yesterday, and he said, well, we, we did some working out, but not the, the type of time that yeah. it would take. I tell you what, they've come out and hit on all cylinders here this evening. It's It's been fun to watch. And look at the amount of targets they lose. Devin Duvernay had probably the second greatest receiving yeah. season in Texas history. And Colin Johnson, that number really doesn't sum it up. You saw him make some of those ridiculous catches just, on the sideline with his six foot six frame. I love receivers that you just throw the football around their body and they just make catches away from them. Colin Johnson was that type of player. Fields bouncing it outside. Violent contact there. DeMarvion overshone, making the tackle. Now, for the Texas defense, Ash did mention the biggest concern right now is that linebacker. We saw Jake yeah. Risk get the start. Juwan Mitchell is now in there with overshone, but they feel like that's where the guys aren't doing what linebackers in this system need to do quite yet, and they are thin at linebacker. Yeah, and he talked about the defensive line, and on the flip side of that, the strength of this defense. They, they've got an inside, outside pass rusher. On the side, it, they, they've, got, they've got that part of it down. They've just got to build some depth at linebacker. Still trying to get to Hardison, and throw it off his back foot, picked off. Josh Thompson, have yourself an evening. What a player. Had a season cut short last year with a foot injury, but he is balling tonight. This is supposed to be an overthrow. It's just an athletic play on the part of Josh Thompson to get back in the lane where the football's coming. It's an interception by the defense. First down, Texas. What a play. If you're Walter Don, you got to get out there and fight. You see the ball's overthrown. You got to try to fight the defensive back for the football and at least break it up. That's the new cornerback coach giving them some love, Jay Valai. This is an almost entirely new staff that Tom Herman brought in, and the early returns are fantastic. Thompson has been so active. Really sounds like this is a system meant to make these cornerbacks thrive. Texas turn it into points, working in plus territory. Another shot over the middle. Oh, turf monster. That's twice. Two times tonight for Tariq Black that 
he has been running it, and all of a sudden, those whatever he's wearing gets caught in the turf. Astro turf with the open field tackle. Got a blocker, sideline, still going, somehow spinning around. He's taking on the entire UTEP defense. Looks like a fumble on the end of it. Maybe a little bit too much. No, I'm not sure. Maybe Brewer comes up with it. They're signaling Texas football. And first down. Weibarak comes up with it. But you got to put it away. He's swinging it out there in a crowded area. However, it was recovered by Texas. First down. Yeah, that ball is ripped out, but Braden Leibrock is there to bring it back. I love the effort, but when you get there, two hands have got to go on the football. The ruling of a fumble recovered by the offense is under further review. You'll never try to tone down the effort that Tariq Black showed there. You love it. As a coach, as a quarterback, the guy gets you some, some extra after a catch, but protect the football but that's the only that? message the turf takes him down and then it takes seven <laughs> utep defenders to take him down <laughs> it happens man it happens i've been waiting you, you get all these rule changes every year i've been waiting on the rule change that if a guy falls on his own yeah, get, that he like, can get, get up, up and, run. and let him run i mean if he's not touched let him get up and run so dennis barnes ripped that one out He did not step out of bounds. <laughs> Black is just fighting everybody. Fortuitous bounce right to Braden Lybrock. I mean, nothing tonight has gone well or gone right for, for UTEP. He had all these white jerseys around Tariq Black. The ball comes out. Braden Lybrock is, is going to find it. He is in there fighting and comes up with it. So reviewing to see. It looks like he just took possession. it away on the replay. Looks like it was in the midst of a UTEP defender. And Leibrock just takes it away. It's hard to tell. It looks like Davion Inyang is, is in that scrum. You get your hands on it. You got to body, body that thing up cradling. Well, this is. Something UTEP really needs right now. They need a call or something to go their way. It looks like Inyang has the football, but it's taken away. And I'm. This could go either way. And I don't like playing the middle, <laughs> but this could go either way. Does he have possession and he's touched down when? Lybrock is, is in there and, and uh, makes it kind so of wrestles it away from, from we, him. We saw the looks, and there's not a good one in there. That's exactly right, and, and if that's the case. And they signaled on the field Texas football. Yes. It will stand. The ruling on the field will stand if they don't have the look that they're looking for. Or that shows possession. There's another look. Let's take one more look. It's out. Here's the call. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Texas. All right, to do here, we'll go right to the line of scrimmage right away. Break the hut, sideline huddle, get over the ball and, and snap it. Because you have a deflated defense right now that is frustrated. They've played a lot of downs, missed a lot of tackles. Malcolm Epps. Now in at tight end, left side of that line of scrimmage. New number for him, wearing number 19. So much time. Tariq Black into the end zone. And for the first time as a Longhorn, he's got a score. So last two touchdowns have been delivered 
by grad transfers, Black and Schooler. Well, they told us that he has emerged as a dude, <laughs> and he is certainly playing that way tonight. Nice little job of coming down inside an outbreak, and then it's just, I want to get in more than you want to keep me out against Dennis Barnes. Three plays, 42 yards, and the course is all set up by the interception from Josh Thompson. And Sticker makes it 35-0. Texas, 44-point favorites, and they're almost there with 12-15 left before we get to halftime. Ball on Longhorn Network is presented by Toyota. Today's the day to get a great deal. Visit buyatoyota.com. And in part by Whataburger. Try the all fresh, all new Pico de Gallo Burger. Available for a limited time. Two of the greatest players yes. to ever play the game. Ricky Williams, Earl Campbell, and Andre we are calling this game above their field. Yeah. This is now Campbell Williams field. Two amazing, Unbelievable. amazing individuals. I've met both, obviously, and, and be, being in the fraternity with the two of them. Uh, Ricky, the quiet type. Earl had showed my family nothing. But uh, with generosity, when they were in New York the night before I arrived uh, for the Heisman Trophy uh, dinner, I've been a big fan all my life of Earl Campbell. And what a fitting honor that this field is named in their honor. It was previously Joe Jamel Field. And Jamel's son was the one that really helped make the push to honor Campbell and Williams. And Ricky's hanging out. There's Ricky. Getting ready to do Texas game day. You say he's quiet. Once you get him talking about a great something sense he of wants humor, to talk, oh man, he's yes. hilarious. Yes, indeed. Great sense of humor. And a heart of gold. I will tell you that. A heart of gold. Ricky Williams. UTEP offense trying to get something going. This timeout. There's an interception. Hardison rolling and throwing. And Jacob Cowling really a tough go here. He's had a couple of balls that were underthrown to him, and that was just in and out. Anthony Cook. It's just been a, a, a ton of mistakes tonight. Just a simple pass like that should be reeled in. Missed tackles that have led to touchdowns. I mean, it's it's just been. Is this big game jitters? I, I think so. I think the lights in Austin, maybe the name on the other jersey a little bit. You know, settle in and just play football. 34 total yards for the Miners, 364 for the Longhorns. Quick pass over the middle, and it's going to be close for first down yardage from Walter Dawn. Well, that's a great read by Gavin Hardison, the quarterback. He saw the blitzer coming down, the safety creeping over the top, so he knew exactly where the hole was going to be in the defense and timed it up just right. We talk about being phased by the bright lights. Perhaps not for Dawn. This is his second game here at Texas. As a freshman, three catches for 19 yards inside DKR. Second first down of the night for the Miners. Hank the tank. Right side and fighting for extra yardage. Sometimes when you, you get a big lead like that, you get lulled to sleep a little bit. Get a Stay focused the entire time you're in the game. There's a lot of a lot of time left here in the second quarter and in the ball game. UTEP is just one play at a time. We're down 35 now. We can't get it all in one play. So you might as well just manage the time you have and move the football with consistency. Just looking for something to hang their hat on yes. offensively. That has eluded them. Watson pressured by Osai. Now, Ozai hasn't gotten to the quarterback yet. It's Texas defense still waiting for that, and that is a big point of emphasis with this Texas team. Big part of going to the four-man front, get to the quarterback more often. They did not do that enough, just 27 sacks a year ago. Yeah, Chris Ash told us he, he's put some good stuff on film 
making the move basically to defensive end from linebacker and he could be an excellent pass rusher moving down along the front four. Hardison put it on a line and another first down. So the Miners now getting something going as Devon Cooper comes up with the catch. I like the depth of the route by Cooper. Make sure you get to the first down marker and the timing from Hardison to get him the football on time. You're getting a lot of man coverage. These corners, Thompson, Jamison, Green, they're right in the face of these receivers. You have to be accurate with the football and the timing is what's going to make the difference for Hardison. This is UTEP offense, they got some guys that can play. Cowan and Garrett and Hankins. Got upside. And another shot. There is Cowling, and he holds this one in. There is that arm strength yeah. that the coaches were raving about. He's been on display on a couple of occasions tonight, and you see it right here as he just rips one across the middle and is able to find Cowling right in stride. 17 yards by the sophomore quarterback. Best drive that UTEP has put together tonight. Fields with the carry. Brought down. Ojibo. Oh, David Binda there. Oh, Hardison should pull one. Yeah. yeah they're showing it, and he until he until he pulls one, Texas isn't going to respect it. So show it to Fields or Hankins. And then he's going to come out of the backside all alone, or at least one on one with a defensive lineman. And the formation can dictate you know, where and how that's going to open up. And that was always a staple of the K State offense that Denver coordinated Colin Klein, Jake Waters. Overthrown, looking for Cooper again. And he had pressure in his face right away the form of Chris Brown now right in the face of Hardison and forced that that high throw you see the safety Chris Brown come down there he is untouched I'm shocked that he was able to even get it through his arms it looked like he may have tipped it a little bit and caused it to go high UTEP just one of five on third down facing a third and nine and we're trying to get something here so that you can go for it on fourth down. Just moving the chains, get something positive. Rolling the pocket on the run, nowhere close. As that's in between two UTEP receivers, and the drive will stall out. I mean, you're down 35 nothing. You got to spin the wheel. That's why I was, you know, kind of shocked. Maybe at the play call, you're, you're just looking for to get it to fourth and medium, fourth and short, and then go for it. He's obviously feeling pretty confident in his kicker, Beckley. Beckley get a 22-yard field goal against Stephen F. Austin. Ask him about his range. He said 50 and in is about where he's comfortable. So get to try one here from about 49. Trying to come back in, and it does not. So the second field goal attempt going that way tonight. It sails wide right. So the best drive of the night for UTEP ends up without points. People grinding every day, making something out of nothing. Steady finding the way. I want you to know I see you. And you're making me proud. Keep soaring like an eagle up in the clouds. Let me say, hey, hey, hey. Let me say, hey. Let me say, hey. Conversation of racial equality in America is healthy for all of us. I could give a shout out to my former colleague, Manny Acho, for the tremendous work he has done uncomfortable conversations with a black man has opened up many eyes 
hit with many different backgrounds. There's Keontae Ingram on the first down carry. And he is an experienced player, really understands protections and where to be, and knows the game well. Ingram, back-to-back -back carries. It's going to be just short of the first down. So Yersich said yeah. there will be enough snaps for all three of these running backs. There's no weakness in his game. I mean, he's got, he is the total package. Third and one. Third and one. Swings it out more. To this point, it's been more in black emerging as the go-to receivers for Sam Ellinger. Of course, a long season ahead. But they have separated themselves from the competition early on. Again, Jake Smith is not playing in this game. The tweaked hamstring. And going outside to Leibrock. He's a nice buck. Glad to see him rewarded in the previous play. He swung one out real quick. Leibrock threw a nice block. And then he gets on the receiving end of the next play. First catch of his Texas career. Going right back to him. Let's make it two straight, says Sam Ellinger. Good shirt freshman from Chandler, Arizona. Look at his presence, Phil. Got one the previous play, and he, why not? Let's go right back to him along the sideline. Sure-handed receiver bringing it in. Jay Bolware coming over from Oklahoma. He's the new tight ends coach and special teams. And remember, Leibrock was the guy that wrestled uh, the football away from Inyang yeah. to, save a, to save a drive. Defense, number 54. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is the first down. They also feel really good about this tight end spot. They feel yeah. with Brewer, Wiley, Epps, and Leibrock, they've got four guys that can all contribute. And they talked a lot about and the young. versatility. Yeah, and Young, not only Brewer, the senior, but the other two, sophomores, along with Leibrock being a red shirt freshman. And we've seen them play in line, flexed out as well. Guys that can do it all. Another carry for Ingram. Positive yardage. You know, Keontae Ingram really was not the same for a few weeks after that drop pass against LSU. The biter of a game. It took him a little while to get back. And during that time, Roshan Johnson really started to steal some of his thunder. But Ingram finished the season really well. Although he may not be the clear lead back, he's definitely one of the top players as Moore is over the middle for another large cap. You start to your point, you start to see more and more uh, offenses use multiple backs anyway. So you better, you know, you want to keep a fresh back at, or ride the hot hand later in the, in the football game. It's not Ricky and Earl. That's exactly right. That, those days, you, you rarely see that type of that type of offense or a coach that, that, that relies on one guy. 140 yards now for Josh Moore. Ingram trying to bounce, gets tripped up. A fine open field tackle by Josh Caldwell. See the difference between the first six games and the last six when it really started to turn it on. Some of that competition helps, right, Andre? No doubt about it. You, you're in there and all of a sudden you, you're banged up or someone else steps in and it's kind of like when Johnson started the game when Ingram had his first, first yeah. carry, you could tell he couldn't wait to get in. That's the carrot, right? Running, Dangling the carrot? Running, you, you saw the energy just, just beaming off his body. Couldn't wait to get in. And that young man there, Johnson, waiting, eagerly awaiting his turn. Third and five. Red zone possession here for the Longhorns. Ellinger twice looking for Brennan Eagles and twice overthrowing him. Taylor with low pressure in the face of Ellinger. And here comes the field goal unit as Dickert gets another chance after missing his first kick. You gotta get him straight. He is just too good to, to miss. Well, Tom Herman, usually you had to work for compliments, right? He told you straight up, 
Dicker is really good. Yeah. It's proof. We've watched games. Yeah. It, it, the proof is there. You've seen it. And there's a 31-yarder right into the new Longhorn cutout, by the way. That's something that we have not mentioned that we'll get into more as this night goes on. Last year, that south end zone, it was just rubble as Texas is completely redoing the south end zone. And there is the Longhorn cutout. Texas players will eventually, next season, make their way out through the crowd onto the field from that Longhorn. In the meantime, they are entering from the north end zone. But Andre, yeah, that's pretty cool. Andre, when you're sitting over there, unless you're the Longhorn Network set, you're bringing in some big money. Yeah, no doubt about that's it. That's high roller territory over there. <laughs> Those suites on the side going up, I mean, of course, they would let Bevo 15 in, but we're talking $10 million a pop. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Won't and really. Did you tell me that you can customize the? Oh inside? yeah. Ten million. You want a you jacuzzi in to. there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put one in there. <laughs> and there's the new video board. Obviously finished in time for the start of this season. Thirty-eight nothing, Texas. Into the end zone. Coming up at the half, we'll send you over to my guys working the phones. We got Griff and Fozzie sitting on the Yeti cooler. Ricky Williams, appropriate social distancing there. Now Alex Loeb is going to come in. He's also working Twitter. Probably getting directions from Andy Wall. Over to the left is our makeup artist, Veronica. We have not seen Veronica in a very long time, so a special <laughs> shout out. She is the one that makes Fozzie, Alex, Ricky and Griff look so look good. good. Oh yeah, it's all her. Well, the turf monster working for both defenses. Not sure if he got tangled with Artisan or if it was just strictly the turf, but. <laughs> Looks like it might've been Hardison, the quarterback. <laughs> got him around the ankles. Just one of those nights, huh? It is. Just a tough, tough night. Had Offensive. such a positive drive going until they got into Texas territory. Well, finished last week, you know, in a game. I mean, not the caliber of opponent, but finished well against Stephen F. Austin, where they had to come from behind and felt like they would ride some of some of that energy into tonight's ball game. Big reason why was that man cowing, and he had a slow start. He's coming off his second career 100-yard game. Yeah, seven. Drilled in seven for 116 last week. But they're they're not getting anything in the ground game. You're looking at five rushing yards, and there's no sacks. So that's all just inefficiency between the tackles for the UTEP running game. And you feel like you should be able to run the football against the 4-2 front, but it's just Time been no, <laughs> really hard to do half. so against this Texas front Media front out. six. All Texas, 38, nothing, 5.03 left till the break. Support and celebrate teachers across the country. Thanks to the CFP, ESPN, is honored to donate $20,000 this week to help support teachers and their students. To learn more about Extra Yard for teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard. And a big thank you to all our teachers everywhere. Some that are going through the rigors of remote education. Some that are back teaching our kids in person. Thank you for everything you do. And for the moms and dads that are going through that Remote education as well. <laughs> I know it can be tough. Third and ten. Hardison taking a shot. Justin Carrot hauls it in. Just what the doctor ordered. Well, they needed a shot in the arm. And Justin Garrett, one of the leaders of this entire, not just the offense and not just the receiver room, but 
the entire football team. Wow. And that young man is, boy, had a, has gone through a lot playing, playing now and playing well. That throw by Hardison on the money. Play action. Taking another shot in and out of the hands of Garrett and Chris. He has been through so much. He has a, grew up homeless, went to a junior college in California. He would commute an hour and a half just to get to practices. But he has become that leader at UTEP after the loss to Rice at the end of last season. He sat down the team. He said, we need to do the little things right. What are those little things? Coach Canales, the offensive coordinator, said after everyone got on the bus, he went back and there was Garrett picking up the trash out of the locker room, which was misty-eyed when we talked about him earlier this week. Yeah, Canal is so emotional as this yeah. ball goes to Cowan because he means that much to the team. They call him the heart of the team. Dana Dimmel saying he's like a son to him. He's gonna be successful in whatever he does, but the coaching staff Coach Canales obviously got very emotional when his name was just brought up. Just loves him like a son. And that is the offensive coordinator, Mike Canales. Coaching on the sideline so he can look his quarterback, Gavin Hardison, in the eye. Big play here, third and two. Along with the walk, with the carry, that's going to be short. As Deshaun Jameson flies in for the tackle. Hardison's got to pull one at some point. But if you're Dana Demo, you got to go for it here. But just he's going to be able to get outside just the defensive end. You're one on one, and I would like my chances against a big fella out on the edge in space. So, what will Dana Demo draw up here? Back in the day, you knew where this was going in the heyday of that Kansas yeah. State offense, right to Colin Klein, Colin Klein. and he was going to power his way forward. Obviously two different players and skill sets, but Hardison's shown you he can move around a little bit. He's got some legs. He doesn't obviously run with the power of a guy like Colin Klein. Now they do have another quarterback option in Calvin Brownholtz. They bring him in. The Brown Dozer? Yeah, in a package called the Brown Dozer. And this team was one of the best in America when it comes to fourth down conversions last season, 18 of 25. They love to use him in the run game. And that's his, kind of his specialty. And Hankins is going to take the snap as Hardison is out wide. Hankins scored a touchdown on the direct snap against Stephen F. Austin. They'll try to convert here, and Hankins does. Big first down for the Miners as Hank the Tank delivers. And that gets him going downhill with the ball immediately in his hands. So he's not having to wait on Hardison to bring it to him. I may go back to that if I'm Dana Demmel or the offensive coaching staff. They do a nice job up front clearing the path for, uh, for Hank the Tank. And they're going back to it. Yeah, stay with it. Direct snap to Hankins. Not much there on the right side. And from our conversations with Coach Ash, it seems like they were expecting more gadgets, more different yeah. looks for UTEP. And that's why I said that they were going to have to adjust. That was one of their keys to the game, to adjust to what UTEP was doing. Expected a lot of gadget plays, plays pushing the ball down the field. Even talked about Hardison and the arm strength. And you could see it last week in a game against Stephen F. Austin. Hardison, back end quarterback. A lot brought down by Jaquis and Chris Brown combining for that tackle. And Chris, Brown, Chris Brown finishing things up. But he wasn't down, quite down yet. He's going to make sure. He's had a, gr had a great camp and really fits this new defensive look of this 4-2-5 look that Chris Ash has brought to town. He did another safety with Brandon Jones in the NFL. Chris Brown played a lot of nickel last year. 
talked about the safeties, Brown and Stearns being one of the positives of this defense. There it is. He pulls it, but swallowed up. Jamison overshoot. Both there on the tackle. Overshoot wearing that number zero. And nowhere to go for, for Hardison. And it's a different look in which they tried to run, run it. It's been single back going to the right side of the formation that has, has me thinking that he could pull Time it going out. left. Texas, their second charge to the half. With the game clock operator, please reset the clock to one minute, 44 seconds. One minute, 44 seconds, please. So we talked about Brown. We talked about Overshown. Two players, they're among the multitude of Texas defensive players, especially in the secondary, to lose significant time to injuries last season. Health is a huge part of this all. It is, and, and especially in, in, you know, in the middle portion of that defense, they've, they've got to stay healthy. That's where they lack the depth that they need to be successful. They know the defensive backs, well, they have, they have got them lined up, one after the other. There's plenty of depth there. The Broken forearm for Chris Brown a season ago. And another field goal attempt for Gavin Beckley. Missed from 49 on his first attempt. Trying to get the Miners on the board. Up from 46. There's the distance. And the Miners are on the board. So at this stage in the program for Dana Dimmel, looking to start building with his guys. This was a team that went winless the year before Dana Dimmel took over. He's now in year three. Been tough. Won this year's for opening game as well as last year, but went, finished the year one and 11. Yeah, in between those openers hasn't in, been too hot. In 2018, he finished one and 11. So he is looking to looking for some positives here in 2020. And UTEP administration has pledged to give him time to build his program. No, I think you have to because if you continue to, to change coaches, you don't you never build continuity within the program. And you got to give him time to get some athletes in. He is going to build it, and he told us this exactly the way they did it at Kansas State with Bill Snyder for all those years. And so junior college, they're gonna look to the junior colleges. Went heavy on Juco this offseason. Sure did. I think seven are seeing time on that UTEP, uh, on the UTEP team. And keep in mind, they had early positive COVID tests, which shortened camp. Only had 15 practices, which is about eight fewer than they typically have. So Sam Ellinger has had a pristine start, four touchdowns. VY, the only other Texas quarterback with four touchdowns and a half in the last 15 years. When you're doing things that VY and Colt oh, yeah. McCoy do, it's really pretty good. It's a pretty good company. But ultimately, those guys won Big 12 titles. VY won the national championship. McCoy played for one. As Ellinger looking sideline. Whittington didn't step out of bounds first. Breaks free of a tackle into UTEP territory. And I think that's exact, you're act, exactly right. The official, when you see the hat come off, that's when it's an indicator that the receiver stepped out of bounds. Texas going fast to the line. Maybe not. Officials holding the play. And here we go. Bajon Robinson in the backfield. Swing pass to Robinson. Oh, the make you move. That is what he's going to bring to the Texans offense. 
Well, that's sweet out of the backfield. He just shook. Barnes in the secondary made him miss and got a couple of extra yards, but boy, that was just sweet. Running backs involved in the receiving game a lot more last season than in previous years. Ellinger changing it up at the line of scrimmage as he's already at a career high 405 passing yards and we've got 104 until halftime. Snap infraction, offense number 68, five yard penalty, still first down. Wonder if he comes back out as the starter in the second half or you get one of these youngsters. Well, they got some action. Casey Thompson, who is the backup, got some time in mop up duty a year ago. Hudson Card, freshman from Lake Travis. Short ball could have been tipped as it was intended for Whittington. I'm trying to pinpoint that fifth touchdown pass. And he had him. Whittington, they told us, may be the Duvernay of 2020 in terms of that slot roll where you catch a lot of passes. Well, it's gone from Little Jordan Humphrey to Devin Duvernay. And now Whittington and when healthy, Jake Smith. Yeah. It's about to be plenty of time for Ellington. Uh-oh, cha-ching. Kai Money getting into the mix. Just all day to throw the football and survey the field. Winger's just kind of sitting back there sorting things out. Robinson. No, it's Ellinger on the keep. It looked like his footwear got caught in the turf. In Ying on the stop. 19 seconds left. Texas looks determined to punch this in for another score before the break. On the run, open receiver, and how about this? Kai Money with two catches in his first career touchdown. This is one of the most unlikely touchdown catches you will see in a regular season game. He just runs a simple out route. Ellinger, the roll, short roll him to the right, and he's able to find some room right around the sideline, and that's good on the next level. When we first heard about Kai Money, it was going into last season's spring game. And it was, man, that's a really cool name for a receiver. <laughs> and the walk-on in the first half ends up with a touchdown catch. Everything going the way of the Longhorns offense. What a scene and a moment that Money will never forget. It's a memory for a lifetime right there. If he catches Plenty more, he, he will always remember that one. I think that's his real name, Kai Money. Like it. I think so. That's a name you give to yourself. <laughs> awesome moment. Get congratulations on the sideline. That from Herb Hand. And here comes Tom Herman over. Look at that. The embrace from the head coach. An amazing moment on the Texas sidelines. He called his number and he answered. That's the that's hard work right there being appreciated by their teammates. They they know the, the hard work he's put in and to see the reward. That'd be a pretty cool dude with everybody. And that many players come over and congratulate you. Out of the end zone. Six seconds left in the first half. 498 yards of total offense for the Texas Longhorns. I mean, he's finding guys that aren't even on the depth chart. Sam Ellinger. Yeah. Six seconds here. If you're UTEP, go ahead and kneel it down and. Get in, the, get in the locker room and talk about it. 
Eight different Texas players with multiple catches. Spread the love. No longer a two-man show with Duvernay and Johnson. Big kid in the backfield by the former walk-on, Court Jaquist. And that will bring us to the end of the first half. 45 to three. All Texas. And the way it started too, right off the bat, the 78 yard touchdown pass on the money from Ellinger to Josh Moore. Ellinger with five passing touchdowns in the first half, already his career high for a game. And here's Chris Budden. Coach, you told me that you had so many emotions and so many concerns before the game. How did those emotions change when Joshua Moore took it 70 plus yards on the first play? Chris, I have no idea what you just <laughs> asked me, but I will tell you, I'm extremely proud of our guys. Offense is playing great. We gotta get the run game going a little bit more. We know that. I love the tempo, I love the throw game. The defense holding them to three points, bunch of three and outs. Really proud of our guys. Since you can't hear me, I'll let you Thank go. You. <laughs> A little hard to hear down there. Yeah, we heard you, Chris. We got you. But bottom line, everything going the way of the Longhorns. Josh Moore getting into the end zone. Kay Brewer following suit. Then he got the big grabs by Washington. Schooler. Guy's been on campus practicing for a week. He finds the end zone as well as Tariq Black. Welcome to Texas football against UTEP presented by Toyota. Texas looking every bit the part of a 44 point favorite. They lead going into the second half, 45 to three. They've been nearly perfect on offense. Lowell Galindo here with Andre Ware. We opened up talking about Sam Ellinger. Yep. Where would he find production after losing two of the most productive receivers in school history, Devin Duvernay and Colin Johnson? Looks like the answer is, it's everywhere, everywhere he looks. You always hear this, the, uh, the old adage, running back by committee. Well, it's been receiver by committee for Sam Ellinger. He has spread the football around. It's kept this UTEP defense completely off balance. And the receivers have really done their part to make Ellinger already at a career high 429 yards passing with five touchdowns and we still got the second half yeah the first one was was an easy one drop a slant route to joshua moore and watch him take it to the house he had more open again but he decided to go to kate brewer the big tight end then schooler gets himself into it he just got the campus gets himself into the scoring along with Tariq Black on a crosser, fights himself in, and then our main man, Money. <laughs> couple of receptions and, an inter and a touchdown, gets himself into the end zone. Five touchdown passes for Sam Ellinger. UTEP will open up on offense. Short throw, good pressure there. That was intended for Walter Dawn. And the pressure from Moro Ojibo. Sam Ellinger really did everything you could possibly ask for. Rise to contender in the fourth half. The only first question, half. Only question left is will he play in the second half? 
What's the call there? If you're Tom Herman, what are you uh, doing? He's done. He's he is done. If if uh, if I'm the, the head coach, Get another guy ready. Keep him ready, just in case for whatever reason. And so this is a perfect opportunity. Tom Herman and his coaching staff to get some experience at quarterback. Get someone else ready and keep that man healthy. Had a oh. game like that against SMU one year and then didn't see the second half. Jack Pardee told me in the locker room, you might as well leave your shoulder pads in your locker. And I'm kind of looking at him like, why? Wow, you're not playing the second half. You're done. And if you're a senior, you don't need those reps anymore, do you? Nope. Third and seven. For Gavin Hardison in the UTEP offense. Just 124 total yards. Pressure. Oshimo brings him down. But there's a flag on the play. Yeah, he had a handful of face mask. That uh, is the reason why he's holding his helmet. He exactly. Just reached back and found Gavin Hardison's face mask. This will be a 15-yarder and an automatic first down. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 98. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So he just kind of disgruntled. He knew it right away. An excellent pass rush, pass rush move where he dips that shoulder and gets around the corner. And he's just trying to reach to get his hands on the quarterback. And found the face mask. And that wipes out what would have been the first sack of the night for the Texas defense. A number that they want to increase after failing to get pressure on. Quarterbacks a season to go. Hankins hit quick. Both side over Sean. What would you like if you're a Texas fan? Something that you have reason to, to be excited about is a lot of jerseys around the football. Yeah. Uh, every tackle, there's multiple jerseys, multiple burn or orange jerseys around the football and not a lot of missed tackles it's been a outstanding game so far for this texas defense and the first year defensive coordinator chris ash partisan throwing right side cowing hits the brakes and a big gain for jacob cowing sophomore receiver out of arizona and by chris adamora the Spur, he plays that spur position. We described that earlier as kind of a hybrid defensive back, linebacker type, 6'1", 214. They're going to ask him to do an awful lot this season. Hankins will take the direct snap. Ojimo almost brings him down. It is Adamora there, close to the line of scrimmage. And that's one of the reasons Ash says it's so difficult to play. you got to be there and run support. Yeah, you be do. able to blitz the quarterback, play one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not sure Ojimo didn't get held, but Hankins took full advantage of it, got a full head of steam. They've gone to that formation and that look a couple of times, and two out of the three times they've done it, they've had some success doing it. They go right back to it again. Just receiving word that Jordan Whittington is out for the remainder of the game with a knee injury. I don't know about the extent or severity of it, but that is big news as Tavondre Sweat breaks through the backfield when Hankins breaks a tackle before Osai brings him down, and that's first down yardage. Yeah, Sweat, the sophomore out of Huntsville High School, good, solid program, just, I mean, throws Andrew Meyer, the center, into the backfield, and Almost makes the play back there. And we have a minor down. Looks like it may be the, the fullback. Fullback James Tupo. That's actually Forrest McKee, yeah. senior from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Hobbling off the field. See him maybe get rolled up right at the end of this. Okay, let's get him out. Yeah, it's the big fella Sweat that's trying to make a play and a friendly fire there. First and 10, Hankins now with 11 carries for 34 yards. It is a big fella. Yeah. 
that can move that quick at 348 pounds. Got a lot of reps his true freshman year. Part of that interior depth that Ash loves. Hardison, left side. Garrett is open, brought down quickly, and that's Deshaun Jameson. When you try as a quarterback, when you see that look, and as a defender sitting out there, he's trying to throw it on his inside shoulder to sit him down. If you lead him, that leads him into a big shot where the, the defense defender's there. He doesn't see him. He's just going to tee off on him. But you can stop a receiver by just putting it on his back shoulder, and he knows exactly what you're trying to do. You tap into the red zone. First time in the red zone. Eldridge, freshman from Houston, direct snap, bouncing it. Big hit. Good pursuit, and Thompson is there yet again. Thompson has been as active as any player on this Texas defense. And outside of Ellinger, he may be the player of the game. The way the job he's done, certainly on the defensive side of the football, he has made play after play, and it's good to see him back in the lineup, healthy. You mentioned it. Broken foot last year, missed nine games. He is playing some football tonight. Eldridge looking to take the direct snap. This has worked well for UTEP tonight. Runs into his own lineman and is wrestled to the turf. Might have gone with a bigger back and, and Dion and Hankins. Keandre Cobra. Yeah, and let Hankins get downhill in a hurry. That's where the success has been. It's a nice opening drive and I know you want to play the freshman but maybe not the time right here in a short yardage situation where you need a little bit of, of power and you go to that look. Yeah Eldridge did not play last week. More running backs getting time. Right there. He's Quadris got a, Wadley out. He's and got a, Utep will take a timeout. Yeah had a receiver wide open timeout. and could have just Utep. given it to him and picked up the this first down first, in Cowan. Media timeout. So four down territory for Dana Dimmel and the UTEP Miners. 45-3 lead for Texas over UTEP. Be back after this. UTEP lines up for a fourth and two. There's a smile in there somewhere. Oh yeah. Dana Dimmel came over and had a conversation with him and his guys earlier. So here we go, fourth and two. Big play here for the UTEP Miners. Trying to find the end zone for the first time. Right now, they just got to move the chains. Hankins, the running back. Gavin Hardison looking for the snap. The check with me play. I don't believe Thompson's in the game here. That's exactly where I would go with the football in the passing game. Whoever came in for Thompson. It's Jalen Green, top of the screen, looking for Dawn. Off his fingertips, good ball by Hardison. And it looked like it was there for the taking for Walter Dawn. Can't throw it any better. I mean, he put it right on the money, fading him away. He had the, the yardage necessary along the sideline. You see him fade him away from the, the defender, Adamora. Use Hardison obviously thinking touchdown rather than first down. So turnover on downs. Adam Morta in coverage. Ellinger back out to add to his career high numbers. Do you like this move, Andre? Might have a nice, nice seat with you sideline the rest of this one. You'd hate to see anything happen. To Sam Ellinger and we you know even there are a couple of drives there where he took some shots after the ball was already gone or handed it off in a in an RPO Be a lot of questions to, to answer second and six quick pass out to Moore got a block by Alvante Woodard there and it's going to set up a third and medium you know, maybe he get you give him a series, one series out of the locker room just to get the feel of having to to come back out, get loose, and then 
start the second half because you're going to have to do it, you know, the remainder of the year. It's certainly against a little bit better comp competition. And then maybe it's, it's rest time. Casey Thompson, Hudson Card, the other Texas quarterbacks that we could see tonight. Third and four. Here comes pressure. Elliott will step up. He will run for this. He's going to be shy of the first down marker. Fourth and one. It looks like they're going to keep the offense on the field and go for it here. Now here comes the punt squad, Ryan. Bicheski coming out. A little late, but they are going to punt it away. First opportunity for Buczewski. Returned in the Alamo Bowl after missing time with a broken collarbone that he suffered last season on a fake punt. I watched him warm up. Boy, does he have a strong leg. The cousin of the great Michael Dixon. Now a star in the NFL. Justin Garrett back to receive the punt. Takes a bounce. What his best work there. Down to the 35. Another shot for the UTEP offense. All on Longhorn Network, presented by Toyota. He's brought to you by Air Gas. Gases, welding, safety products, and proud nitrogen fog provider when the Longhorns take the field. And in part by Omni Barton Creek Resort and Spa, where you can stay a part of the game. Moments ago, the standout defensive performer for the Texas defense, Josh Thompson, was walked to the locker room. Chris Budden has more. In the previous UTEP possession, I saw him walking off the field, holding the right side of his head, almost cupping his ear. He then went into the medical tent, spent 10 minutes there before he walked to the locker room, as you saw with a towel over his head. So injuries, one of the biggest storylines for the Texas secondary a year ago. Never really played at full health. As that ball is incomplete. Looking for Eldridge. Also, Jordan Winnington is in the locker room. Did something to his knee and will not return in this game. Winnington had most of his freshman season wiped out because of a sports hernia a year ago. It required multiple surgeries to try to get that fixed. You just hate to see the injuries mount up during an opening game of the season. Especially with score the way it is. Artisan to Garrett. It's going to be good for five yards. And this is the play that happened before Winnington walked off the field. It goes down. That's an incomplete pass. And then he limps to the sideline. Later left the game. The word from Texas, knee, and will not return. Texas already thin at that position for this game with Jake Smith a no-go because of a hamstring injury this week. Hasn't been described as a serious hamstring, but you know those hammy injuries. Well, with two slots out, they'll obviously go to more tight ends. Brewer and Leibrock. We've had a, both of them a touchdown catch for Brewer and Leibrock with a couple of receptions. Third and five flag on the play. That was complete to Eldridge. Illegal shift on the offense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play brings up fourth down. And UTEP will punt it away. We will point out as the Texas defense is coming off the field, it is Jalen Green, number three, replacing Josh Thompson at the cornerback position. He'd been in the lineup with certain formations that UTEP would show as the extra defensive back. Yeah. 
Sloan, the punt, standing at the 25. Jamison back. Jamison will look for a return. Up the middle. There's a lot of green. He gets a block. Bye-bye to John Jamison for the second time in his career. Punt return for a touchdown. Flag, however, is down. Back at the opposite 13. Where the formation in which UTEP punts from just lends itself to big returns. They're so spread out. Flags all the way back inside the 15 yard line, right around the 13. And it looks like it could be a block in the back. On Woodard. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number nine. That's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Texas. You see clearly that Alvante Woodard with a block in the back. And it looked as though no, no, one of the UTEP uh, uh, cover man was going to go right by Jamison. But you see that open field ability from Jamison. Oh, my goodness. So dangerous. That would have been his second punt return. He's already returned a kick for a touchdown. I mean, we're talking like Eric Metcalf stuff, the way this guy has scored touchdowns for the University of Texas. That's Roshan Johnson as Casey Thompson. They answered your question about how long would they go with Elliger yeah. in the second half. You, you hit it spot on, first series and out. Casey Thompson comes in, fifth career appearance. We'll throw on the run. He's got an open receiver off the hands of Marcus Washington. Washington had a big grab early, but man, that one, I wish that he had that back. And couldn't have been thrown any better by Casey Thompson. Especially from a football family. Father said Charles played at Oklahoma. His brother, Kendall, wide, played wide receiver at Oklahoma. Family tree of of football players. A little more of a gunslinger than Sam Ellinger. Kind of a wild card in terms of what you're going to get from him and the way he makes plays. Comfortable throwing on the run and working off script. An adjustment from Washington, but incomplete. So a three and out after that block in the back wiped out the Jamison touchdown. Washington goes right over to him and apologizes for that, that drop. So second straight possession ending with Buczewski out to punt it away. But to your point, you, know, you just want him to, to get used to coming out of the locker room and playing. That's why Sam Ellinger got that. That possession. If it were later in the season, I'd imagine he wouldn't have even taken a snap in the second half. Garrett will give it a shot, but immediately wrapped up and brought down by Tyler Owens. 5-26 left to play in the third quarter. All Texas, 45-3. DKR, but you got the great Hookem wearing his protective mask. Got a way to get it done. Hookem. Singing Eye of the Tiger. Yes, Love it. Sir. Hey, let's take a look at our moment of chill presented by Coors Light. Texas popping the top on the first play. Joshua Moore taking it to the house on a slant route for his quarterback, Sam Ellinger. I mean, a nice slant, well timed. What a way to start the 2020 season. Up the middle for Eldridge, a couple of yards. And 
And Ellinger is starting off the Heisman campaign. It's not something he really talks about. Well, you got to try to ignore that as much as you possibly can. It's a little bit harder in today's world with social media and yeah. than when uh, back in my day, but you just got to put your head down and get in a routine of not reading your own press clip. Back to Eldridge. Reese Lato almost brought him down. Because it becomes. Anthony Cook does. It becomes you know, unnecessary pressure on yourself. If you, you start talking about that, hey, you're just trying to win football games, stacking wins together, and trying to have a successful season. And you're the quarterback of Texas. If you win and put up numbers, the voters are going to notice. That's never been an issue. Calvin Brownholtz now checking it for the first time at quarterback on a third and 11. Eldridge is his running back. Pressure up the middle. And complete. Jalen Green bringing down the UTEP receiver. Looks like now Jay. Looks like Jalen Green is slow to get up. Timeout. That'd be the second player. corner tonight with Josh Thompson already out. That was Miles Banks on the reception. Not a good sign here for the Texas secondary. Jalen Green coming in for the injured Josh Thompson. Now in pain. And that's one of the stronger areas of this defense. Talking to Chris Ash, it's the secondary where they where they are deep. And it's good to see him bounce up and walk off under his own power. He just got mixed up in there on that that stop. Not sure exactly what the injury was or where what was bugging him. A junior from Houston. Former ESPN 300 recruit on a defense chock full of them. Fourth and five. This will bring up a punt from UTEP. Flag on the play. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 18, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. It has been some night for yeah. Dana Demel's team. Penalties, missed tackles, dropped passes, it's been tough. No rhythm. None. Just a couple of sustained drives that stalled in Texas territory. <laughs> Another shot for Jamison. He's going to let this one bounce. It takes a nice Texas bounce to the 32. So, Andre, you were not very kind to the Texas defense back in your day, were you? Uh, I think it had little to do with I wanted to go to school here. But uh, we came in, dropped a bunch of passes early in that ball game and then got things turned around. That man. one was at home in the dome and Manny Hazard getting behind the secondary. Some fun times. That's not a bad line right there. That will win you a Heisman Trophy. 2-0 and oh against the Longhorns, a team that did recruit you, but not necessarily no, in the they, spot you wanted to play. They wanted me to backpedal instead of drop back. <laughs> There's Robinson, he's got a crease to the 50, still nice upright to the 40. Say hello to Bijan Robinson, true nice. freshman out of Arizona. What an excellent move, and they talked about just how smooth he was with the football on his hands, in his hands. Watch the move that he throws right on the edge of that. Uh, Good break up there as Josh Caldwell got in as that pass was intended for Schooler. But you're right, it's an added yeah. dimension that Roshan Johnson and Keontae Ingram don't necessarily have. Yeah, you mentioned it, the player of the year in the state of Arizona, an All-American. 
and just physically looks the part. So he just shows up on campus looking like a grown man at six foot, 222 pounds. His high school number is absolutely absurd in Arizona. Back to Robinson, there's that quick change of direction. And he just runs with this smoothness, this comfort that the great ones kind of have. And I'm not going to put him in any category, but they make it look easy and almost as if they're playing in slow motion. And that's exactly what he, kind of how he looks with, with the ball in his hand. Ingram checks back into the game. He'll go out wide, so empty for Casey Thompson on a third and six. Kai Money at the bottom of your screen. I'm trying to get to quarterback draw here with this formation spread everybody out and let Thompson carry instead taking a shot to Brennan Eagles Eagles makes the catch he took it right off Tyreek James and Eagles hauls it in oh, what a throw by Thompson scratch that quarterback draw he's <laughs> there this baby out He's right on the money to Brennan Eagles. Looks the safety to his left and then lets it sail. And nice job of concentration on the back end of that by Eagles. Six of his seven touchdowns now going back to the beginning of last season for at least 30 yards. That one from 35. High degree of difficulty. And it is 52 to 3, Texas. Floodgates now officially open. Well, it's just good, good work on the part of Casey Thompson. I mean, does it exactly like it's supposed to be done? Looks the safety to his left and gets him to move just a step, and then puts one on a frozen rope to his receiver right up the hash mark. This also goes back to motivation. We talked about Roshan Johnson getting the start over Keontae Ingram. Yeah. Many anticipated that Brennan Eagles would be the starter. Instead, Tariq Black beats him out. Now, there's still going to be plenty of opportunities yeah. for Brennan Eagles, but it was Black that started and is number one on the depth chart over him. They say bodies up defensive backs well with that size. They call him a deep threat, and he obviously he shows it there. Going up, reeling that one in. And that is the most experienced receiver at the University of Texas. Schooler and Black have a lot of experience. Most of that coming at Michigan and Oregon. Eagles, 24 games, eight career starts. I don't think you have much to worry about in that department. Now, nah, there's some the receivers. Some weapons. That was the first career touchdown pass from Casey Thompson. What you like about it, if you're Ellinger and Casey Thompson, you got some size. Moore at 6'1", yeah. Black at 6'3", and Eagles at 6'4". Cade Brewer, he taps in at 6'4". That's what I was talking about earlier. You don't have to be perfect as a quarterback when you got size like that. You just... Throw it in the area of, of guys like that, and they make plays for you. Exciting for Texas fans to think what this group could be. Also, Jake Smith, when he comes back, had a very good freshman year. Eagles, now seven touchdowns in his Texas career. He was also one of the young men that was very vocal in the fight for racial equality. Threatened to leave the program and, and play elsewhere until changes were made. Changes were made, and Eagles is back making plays. False start. Offense, number 67. Five-yard penalty, first down. So Brown Holtz is back at quarterback for UTEP. It still appears like Gavin Hardison is the guy. Do you want to see your guy play through a whipping like this, or do you want to well, to let someone else experience that and get some reps. There's a gray area in getting the sophomore ground hold some, some reps and then saving and not subjecting Gavin Hardison 
to injury in, this, in a ball game like oh, this. Nice move in the backfield by Willie Eldridge, freshman from Houston. So I think basically, you know, they've got a conference, they've got a schedule to play and a conference that they feel like you know, they can compete in. You don't want Gavin Hardison to go down because he gives them the best chance to win, but you also now can give Brownholtz get him some experience. <laughs> We're seeing the Texas defense now get some of the young guys in. It's number 95, Alfred Collins on the defensive line as Brown holds goes, and that is just setting up his receiver to get smacked. Kenyatta Watson that making goes. the tackle against Josh Farr. Yeah, remember earlier we talked about sitting a receiver down by putting the ball on the inside shoulder? That's what that's that's exactly my point. You want to sit him down with the ball because a corner sitting out there waiting to tee off on it. So put it on the inside, and he doesn't absorb that much contact because he can turn and run up the field or get back inside. And that's just chemistry of working together time and time again. Third and long for Brown Holtz in the UTEP offense. Second teamers in for the Longhorns. Brown Holtz trying to elude the pressure. For a moment, he does throwing on the run. There's some contact there. Tyler Owens made the contact on time. Yeah, no flag. For Josh Farr curling back inside. He's gonna bring up a fourth down here for UTEP, and I would imagine they'd punt it away. UTEP offense last season only averaged 329 yards per game. That was 116th nationally. They're at 177 tonight against his Texas defense, which is at least showing the first step. You got to make in the defensive turnaround. After a poor season a year ago. And here's Jamison, sideline. Close to the 50, where Casey Thompson and the Texas offense will take over. Let's take a look at our Big 12 schedule brought to you by Dr. Pepper. An awful start for the Big 12. Yeah. Louisiana goes to Ames and takes down Iowa State 31-14. This was supposed to be one of those years with Brock Purdy, Brees Hall, that Iowa State could make a run in the conference. Of course, it's not a conference game. Kansas State falls to Arkansas State 35-31. OU all over Missouri State. Rattler looked good, breaking another quarterback there. I'm actually kind of surprised that Houston Baptist is. is able to put up 20 points against Texas Tech. And Coastal Carolina leading 14-0 over the Kansas Jayhawks. Not a good showing for the Big 12. Ingram for a handful of yards. What do you think of the conference race this year? Is it Oklahoma and everybody else? Do you put Texas and well, Oklahoma State in that chase? Seeing what Texas has, if they can stay healthy, it's Oklahoma and, and, and Texas. But, you know, you thought, as you mentioned, Iowa State would would, uh, would make a, a splash. Not, maybe not after, after seeing them play today. They are notorious. We talked about this before the kick today of slow starts yeah since matt campbell took over they but, have started the season slow but no excuse to lose today at Offside. home Offside, defense number seven five yard penalty still second down and if you bring up the fact that everything is different with covid yeah well every program's going through that right now you see there it is the best best chance to win the big 12 according to fbi it's texas Oklahoma. Now the preseason media poll in the Big 12 had OU first, followed by Oklahoma State, and then Texas. A lot of that has to do with, obviously, Sam Ellinger returning as a quarterback here, and Lincoln having to replace yeah. you know, a quarterback again. But he's, he's proven in a couple of years in a row that he's a, certainly capable of, do, of doing it. Rattler, a non-transfer though, recruited out of high school. Texas passing the eyeball test safely as well. Kai Money finding the end zone. 
<laughs> One of those nights, Eagles spreading his wings as well. Fourth quarter time. It's what he sees. 52-3. He's looking for a mascot to harass. <laughs> like he got after Elga. No minors on hand for him to flex that might, that muscle. It lulls him to sleep and then shows that power. He's got a good burst. First snap of the fourth quarter. Texas in charge 52-3. to three. Took an early lead on the first snap. Have to look back. Thompson does what he does so well. Elusive on the hoof as he weaves his way through the UTEP defense. Nine yard gain. You imagine Texas to keep the football on the ground here? Oh, yeah. Well, check that. As we say, well, they got to feed Kai Money. As we say that, he swings one out to Money, actually, for a it's like a bit of a loss. But we're going to halftime. I thought for sure that Texas would come out and just run the football. That's what Tom Herman told Chris going into the to the locker room. Empty for Thompson. His left tackle is now Andre Carrick, true freshman from South Lake Carroll. As the night is also done for the other Sam, Sam Cosme. Got the seam right now. He just holds the safety. Thompson back to Kai Money. And that's a first down. Nice job of getting it out quickly. He's one of those receivers. Be a walk on, but sure handed. You know, you know he's going to know where exactly to line up. When you go to him, no money in the bank. Roshan Johnson. Back and running back, flag on the play, and overthrown. Offside, defense, number 99, in the neutral zone at the snap. Five yard penalty, still first down. Might be exactly why Casey Thompson went up top. He knew he had a free play and decided to put, try to put one in the end zone. Run to the left side. Roshan Johnson. I love the, how he runs with his pads over, over himself. Not good body lean. Ooh, stood up there. Stout defensive play by Gary Third. Yeah, but he wasn't going to be denied of the first down. It's exactly two hands on the ball, good body lean, initiating contact. Thompson. Good hands by Washington. He had that drop earlier, not this time. Marcus Washington finds the end zone. And about the Washington is in for the first time in his Texas career. Yeah, Lowell, how about the placement of the football by Casey Thompson? High and away from the defender, inside. Hey, he can't make a play on that. 6-2 Marcus Washington climbing the ladder and making a nice grab for Casey Thompson, who's now thrown his second touchdown pass of the evening. It plays 54 yards, all engineered by Casey Thompson. And the route is on. Casey Thompson, sophomore from Oklahoma. Celebrate with a big guy, with the freshman, Jake Majors. The only thing the nine is missing is a touch for Sam Cosby. I mean, when every time you touch the ball, you get in the end zone, 
Maybe you should get fed more. Cosme, a season ago, becoming the first Texas offensive lineman with a rushing touchdown since individual stats started in the 1940s. Now he's got the face shield on. He's going to sit the rest of this one out. But Chris decided not to sit this season out. Yeah, we've seen several players choose to opt out this season, especially those that are going to be potential top draft picks in the NFL. ESPN's Todd McShay considers Cosme to be a potential top 10 pick. He said there was no question he was going to play this season. And when you ask him why, he says it's that 2017 signing class. He said when they came in, they were underrated. No one gave them a lot of credit. They finally feel like this is the year that that class can prove their worth. They say they're hungry. They're more than hungry. They're starving for that Big 12 championship. Well, I like the finish to the to the touchdown. Oh, yeah. He lowered, lowered the shoulder, the shoulder baby. and showed some athletic ability. And you see why he's rated as as, as high as he is. The, the mobility, just physically gifted at 6'7", 310 pounds. He's got the mean streak, but it only comes out on the field. He yeah. is one of the nicest guys you will meet away from the field. Cosby, though, projected to go in the first round. Connor Williams, for a long time, was projected to go in the first round. Didn't work out for him, still playing in the NFL, but didn't get drafted as high as he would have liked to. Before that, it was such a long drought. Texas offensive lineman not being selected in the NFL draft. But Connor Williams was a guy that came into Texas. He was an overlooked recruit. Yeah. And the same can be said for Sam Cosme. Started his career over on the right side. Now second season for him, protecting the blind side of Sam Ellinger. And he is arguably the best left tackle in college football right now. Brown holds, taking a shot. And broken up by Kenyatta Watson as he was in a foot race with Devon Cooper. Boy, just drop after drop after drop by this UTEP offense. A little double move, he gets a step. Ball's thrown well, a little bit to the outside, had to wait on it, but still, you get it thrown there and you get a hand on it like that, you should be able to reel it in. Brown holds three for five, 22 yards. He's played well. First real extended time of his career. I'm pleasantly surprised with for the way he's throwing the ball. Complete to Josh Farr. He talked about just you know him playing, him being the short yardage quarterback. Yeah, bringing him in on you know, third and short, fourth down sometimes. But what he is slinging it around and doing it with some confidence. Third and four for the Brown Dozer. Don is there. First nice. down catch for Walter Don Jr. This is how you make your way into the conversation. You make it tough for the coaches to take you off the field. As much as you know, they rave about Gavin Hardison, uh, this kid has come in, Calvin Brunholtz, and, and moved the team. Uh, that is a, just a strike thrown right there. Mobile, accurate, that's what you're looking for. Another California kid. This UTEP roster is full of them. No one there to come back. And that one nearly picked off by Jade Barron, freshman from Pflugerville. We've got a nice the way the depth chart is set up for the Longhorns where you don't really have to rely on very many true freshmen. You got one in obviously in the mix at running back and then Alfred Collins gonna see some time on the defensive line. Just set up perfectly in that, that area. Well it's such a unique season as this one is complete. But Miles Banks, such a unique season and not just the recent change to four games yeah. to still take a red shirt. This entire year is essentially a freebie. Yeah, I'm interested to see just how teams handle when guys come back 
but coaches are ready to move on to the next four or five star yeah. recruit. And you have a guy that's played for you or can play, has been in the program and wants to come back. Third and four for Brown Holtz. Let's face it, it's just a brutal honesty of this game, yeah, right? A guy like Sam Ellinger, he wants to staff. come back, yeah. you bring him back. Offense, number 83. Five yard penalty remains third down. And they're going to be. But there's some guys that you, honestly, the coaches don't want coming back yeah, for a variety of reasons. They're going to be cuts. They're going to be guys transferring or going to have to transfer. So there'll be a lot of activity throughout the offseason or during this next summer. I think about the hit that Big 12 and Pac 12, excuse me, Big 10 and Pac 12 yes. are taking right now because those players that would have an extra year of eligibility are transferring to conferences that are playing. And can play another year. Yep. Third and nine, and there is the sack. Hitting home is Alfred Collins. This Texas staff thinks there will be many in the future of that true freshman from Bastrop, Texas. Just talked about it, just called his name, and he, he shows up in a big way. Excellent move inside and then has the athletic ability to redirect himself as the quarterback's trying to escape, he, he finds a way to get home. That was one of the biggest additions to this Texas recruiting class. Tom Harmon liked what they had put together in that early signing period. You know, the staff wanted to land that man, Alfred Collins, and they did. One of the top pass rushers. Oh no, the early hit there. On Jamison, a flag is going to come out and is as Owens is scrambling for it. But Collins, one of the top pass rushers, recruiting quite some time here to the University of Texas. And that's one spot, too, that Coach Ash pointed out. They are lacking when it comes to pure pass rushers right now. It's essentially Joseph Osai to an extent to Quan Graham and looking for other options there. It looks like Robert Corner. The third is going to get flagged. Kick catch interference. Kicking team number 18. That's a 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. We'll get a chance. I think here, Lowell, to see the, another true freshman in Hudson Card take the, take the field under center. He's in the huddle. There he is, number one out of Lake Travis. We got the Westlake guy getting the Lake Travis guy ready to go. This is football on Longhorn Network. He's presented by Toyota. Toyota is a proud corporate sponsor of Texas Athletics. Toyota, let's go places. And in part by Coors Light, made to chill. 21 means 21. Welcome back to Daryl K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium as Hudson Card, the true freshman quarterback from the powerhouse that is Lake Travis High School, will make his Texas debut. He enters as one of the most highly ranked Dual threat quarterback prospects at Texas in years. Number 40 overall in the ESPN 300. And it all starts right here. Is this man the heir apparent to Sam Ellinger? Roshan Johnson with the carry. Good yardage on first down. What if Casey Thompson has something to say about it? He came in, looked sharp, threw two quick touchdown passes, and Decided his night was over. Going to give the, the true freshman a look. Texas bringing in two quarterbacks in this class. Jaquindon Jackson as well. Jackson, though, suffered a torn ACL in the senior year of high school. Still working back for that. To back carries. Roosevelt Johnson takes a helmet with him. Wow. For the first down. Robert Corner losing his lid. Oh, that is some tough running. Delivering the Goodness. blows. I mean, helmet came right off. Robert Corner. Oh, 
Archie Carr will care for the first time. Throwing it backwards. And he's got his man, Malcolm Epps. Working down the sideline inside the 15. How about that for changing it up a little bit? Well, you see why he was so highly recruited and how athletic he is. An excellent job of extending the play to the last possible second, but then knowing exactly where your outlet is to get rid of the football. That pass backwards, so does not go down as the first career pass attempt for Young Hudson Carr. At the 15. Now that's to the walk-on Jarrett Smith. Texas also has Gabriel Watson on the roster. It's a senior grad transfer from Sioux Falls. A D2 program as Watson was a finalist for the Harlan Hill, basically the D2 Heisman in 2018. He has yet to make his Texas debut. He's cleared to play in this game. Carr will keep good acceleration. Bounces it outside and showing some power on the run until he is brought down shy of the five-yard line. Wow, he's got some wheels. Yes, sir. To go along with some size, 6'2", 193 pounds. You know he's going to add some weight. This as a true freshman. And he recovers from that one, wasn't ready for the snap. Somebody flipped it right back to him. Yeah, it's going to be a false start on Texas. He already has a Heisman-worthy mustache. Jake Majors is start. in at center. Offense, not all 11 players were set at the snap. That's a five-yard penalty, remains third down. And he was ready to go, and everybody else was <laughs> not so much. But they think a lot of Jake Majors, another true freshman. So you've got a true freshman in at center and a true freshman in at quarterback. Majors, the freshman from Prosper, Texas, also an ESPN 300 commit. He is the backup center. Terry to Smith. Met quickly. How important are these reps if you are Hudson Card? Totally important. I mean, anytime you can get in, and you can't simulate the environment, you can't simulate the competition as you're going against a scout team in practice, but you know, this is very valuable to his development going forward. Fourth and three. Texas will go for it. The first fourth down attempt on the season. No Tom Herman, there will be many more. Card has time, dancing in the pocket, throwing on the run. Off the fingertips of his intended receiver. So Texas will turn it over on downs. As the first drive of the career of Hudson Card comes to an end. On a failed fourth down attempt. Still a lot of football left. For that man to play here on the 40 acres. And of course, Sam Ellinger there to greet Card as it comes to the sideline. Before they were known as UTEP, it was Texas Western. And in 1966, the game that changed American sports happened. All five starters for Texas Western were black, and they took down Kentucky. A monumental win for all sports. As Don Haskins and Texas Western delivered that national championship 72 to 65. And in that spirit, UTEP moves forward to try to promote healthy change, social justice, the Together We Care, TWC initiative, like Texas Western College, UTEP athletes committing to fostering diversity and inclusion, creating an environment of love and respect, supporting equity in education, and leading change.
quick pass to the flat. Stood up at the 15. Open field tackle. As Adam Cousins make the catch. You and I were talking during the break about Brown Holtz and just mentioned the fact that I like his toughness. You know, and the and the body language. He's he's not afraid of the moment. He's just out there wheeling and dealing and having fun. What do I have to lose? You know, we're down 59 to three, but there's something about him that, that uh, when you watch him walk around on the sideline and warm up. There's a quiet confidence about that. Well, we know what he has to win. It's play time right now. As he is just flirting with disaster, and that's yeah. not going to help the cause. The flag does come in late. It's going to be a late hit out of bounds, but that one should have been thrown away. Once he escaped the first defender, just sling that baby out of bounds. Marcus Tillman with the pursuit. Most scored under Tom Herman, 59 points. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Defense number 13. It's a 15 yard penalty from the dead ball spot. Automatic first down. That's going to go against Marcus Tillman. Gives them a fresh set of downs here. And this drive will continue for you today. Good room to run up the middle. And Ronaldo Flores with one of the bigger gains of the night for the Miners. Elijah Bravo, who is now checked in the game at quarterback for the Ted Miners. Another carry for Flores. So after this for Texas, we'll take on Texas Tech. Flores just looks sharp. Some energy. I know he's playing against some backups here against Texas, but showing some punch, a little speed. Another yeah. nice carry for Flores. This is how you get a coach's attention is just showing that you're, you're, you're going to continue to play. It's primarily been used as a third down back as he limps off the field. Well, you don't want to see that. Junior from El Paso as there are 28 players from El Paso on this UTEP roster as he is 10 to 2 on the bench. Injuries of note for Texas. Jordan Whittington leaving the game. Not returning with a knee issue. Josh Thompson apparently holding his ear as he went to the locker room to get checked out. Not sure if any of those players would have played in the second half, but obviously they will be key for Texas moving forward. Well, we are way on down the depth chart <laughs> yeah. right about now. Yeah, guys are actually coming in that are not on the depth chart. But this is something that Tom Herman said he wanted to do. Recently, he's given more reps to third and fourth teamers than he ever has, especially at the end of practice, because it's an opportunity. Going back to the fact that there's going to be an extra year of eligibility in games like this, why not play some of these guys? Yeah. You get the valuable playing time. They mature. They're not deer in the headlights when they go in ball games. They've been in them before. And now it's just, you know, cut them loose and let them play. 
Some of these guys really have high upside. Bottom of the screen, Keaton right. Crawford. I think when you take that approach, you have a better football team. When obviously, when injuries occur, that guy's ready to play. 37. Try to run for it, but Bravo comes up shy. And imagine at this point in time, going for it on fourth down. No here. doubt about it. You have to. 59 to three. There's no doubt you're going to go for it here. Dana Dimmel, ton of respect for Tom Herman in this Texas program. Dimmel, like Herman, former head coach at the University of Houston. You got to know both when they were there. And I'll tell you what, of, of all the guys that have been there, Dana, excuse me, uh, Tom Herman welcomed Time me out. back more so than maybe anybody wow. that, uh, that, that was there. Media timeout. Final minute in 17. Game presented by Toyota. Eight plays, 70 yards, and it featured pretty much everything, Andre. Yeah, he threw the ball left, he threw it right. He's accurate with the football, and then on an end around to Whittington, he's out leading the block and trying to help him get into the end zone. Johnson obviously finishing the touchdown run there, but what a night for Sam Ellinger. Isaiah Bravo now trying to convert on fourth and three. Find the end zone for the first time for the Miners in the final minute and 17 seconds of this game. Have something to hang their hat on before they return to El Paso. Bravo looking right side, he's got a man, but overthrown looking for Miles Banks and it will be Texas football to kill the final 110 about as good as you could have asked for from Sam Ellinger yeah. to start off his senior year 25 of 33 career high 426 yards five touchdowns clean not sacked no interceptions you see the total offense tonight. Did we learn a couple anything? of throwaways on that? Yeah, in there as yeah. well. So you start to see the uh, the experience shine through, knowing that I'm not going to, you know, force a bad situation into a turnover and, and make it worse. Got rid of the football. Let's come back on second down and play. This is it's a great performance by Sam tonight. What did you learn about this Texas team? Well, they're better defensively. They've got some speed. They can cover. They're going to come after you on that side of the ball. The tackling is certainly better here in the in the opening game of the season. Only three missed tackles in the ball game for Texas, and then offensively, you know, they've got three. They go three deep legitimately at running back and the receivers. I don't think they have or Texas fans have much to worry about in that department. They've got a cast of guys that can certainly make plays. It will just be questions about health now. Yeah. What's the status of Jordan Winnington? left after it looked like he tweaked his knee, did not return to the game. Jake Smith already out of this game with a hamstring issue. And then you Josh also Thompson. have Josh Thompson. That That yeah. is big too because you brought it up, defensive player of the game right there. Yeah, he, he played an outstanding game and it's just heartbreaking to see him have to go into the locker room and not be able to, to come back into this football game. Josh Moore after missing last season leads the Texas receiving core with six catches for 127 yards. And Texas puts up 59 points, the most ever in a game with Tom Herman as the head coach. And that puts a wrap on it as David Dimmel and Tom Herman meet at midfield. Eight Texas TDs tonight. Six different receivers caught touchdown passes. The tight end caught a touchdown pass. I would say uh, the, the passing game is, is in good shape. And the eyes of Texas plays as Texas is still at midfield. And some of the Texas players heading for the locker room. Not really time for Texas to either gather as a team in the end zone. 
to sing the eyes of Texas. It's really not not even being acknowledged. Yeah. By a mass group of players that are headed for the locker room. Well, it almost seemed like it was played in a way where Texas would not even have the opportunity as yes. a team to gather That's if exactly they were right. going to do that for the eyes of Texas. That's exactly right. The show band of the Southwest not on hand. The song piped in. To the speakers here in house. Texas takes care of business in the season opener 59 to 3 over the UTEP Miners who fall to 1 and 1. The Longhorns now can start focusing on Big 12 play as Texas Tech will be the opening conference opponent for the Longhorns. Sam Ellinger leads his guys back to the locker room. Joseph Osai not get to the quarterback as he wanted to, but the starting front four was as stout as you could be in this game. Well, those interior defensive linemen were very active. The size and quickness is going to open up a lot of stuff for a guy like Joseph Osai on the outside, but you've got to be really impressed with how they played in the front, those front four. Here's Chris with Coach. Well, Coach, I'm assuming you can hear me this time. Okay, I love it. Okay, a 59-3 to win. What did you learn about your team today? Well, a lot. You know, I, I think to be able to come out as fast as we did with the offseason that we had, uh, they've got a lot of resiliency. This season is very important to them. And uh, But I also learned that in the second half, we got a lot of work to do with our two. Given the distractions, the short and fall practices, what are you most proud of today? Well, we flew around, we made a lot of plays, we tackled well, got a lot of penetration on defense. Well, okay, we need to shore up the offensive line, had too many guys in the backfield at the time. But um, just the fact that we played really, really hard and uh, for the most part, fundamentally sound. You have always been very vocal about sticking up for your players and the desire for the fans to stick up for the players. We saw them go into the locker room as eyes were playing today. What did you think of the display of your players and their voice against the eyes? Well, I don't, I don't know that that was any kind of voice or demonstration. We were just saying uh, our good games and pleasantries to the opposition, and uh, it was over, and now we're headed to the locker room. Good deal. I appreciate it, Coach. All right, thank you. 59-3, to three, the final for Tom Herman, opening up his fourth season as the head coach of the Texas Longhorns. Enjoyed it, my man. Me too, Andre. Always fun. Always. Safe travels back to Houston. Coming up next, we got Texas game day final. Going to throw it over to the Kai Money of Longhorn Network, Alex Lowe.